Cecily Strong, this year's host of the White House Correspondents' Dinner. We're talking the night before. Mm -hmm. The I guess big is, event. Huh? Yeah. yeah. So tell me, is the speech ready? Just it is finalized? It's just about there. I'll probably be making changes up until I'm done speaking. In fact, I'm sure I'll, you know, while I'm sitting there, I'm going to have little changes. I may add some things. And then during, who knows? If, I, if my brain works during the speech, I may even do some tweaks during it. How many times have you practiced and what's, what's your practice routine? Um, well, I was just in LA and so I've been using friends out there as kind of, they're my, my audience, my test audience. So I've been reading through everything and just seeing what works and I've practiced with them. I've practiced on my dad last night, which I didn't want to do, but then as I started going, I wanted him to be a fresh laugher. So but he's heard most of it now. I read that your, you said your dad has a really loud laugh. He did does. you get some loud laughs from him? I did, I got some, yeah. Oh, good. But I think I, I was kind of speed reading it because I really do want him, I want those real laughs from him too. Right. So how have you prepared for tomorrow night? Oh, I don't know. I don't know that I am prepared uh, mentally. <laughs> but I've, I have a great group of writers that I'm working with and they're here with me now, a lot of them. Um, but we've done, we had a couple meetings where we sort of talked about what we wanted to write and uh, some ideas, what we wanted to hit. And then we've had a couple joke reads. And then it's just been, because we've had this two week hiatus from the show. So it's been, I've been in Atlanta and LA. So it's been a lot of emailing back and forth, me doing edits, them doing edits, then me doing edits on that. New joke packets coming in. It's been a daily, a daily thing. So, are these Saturday Night Live writers? That Most you're of them are. With? Yeah, and one girl's from Fallon, and then we've got we're working with um, Seth's head writer, Alex Bays. Oh, okay. Did you put this group together yes. for this? Yeah. What'd you say? I mean, what, why? Why did you think? I, I, let me get this group together for. Well, this. I knew because I worked with a lot of the people from Update before, so I knew I wanted to work with them, and they they were a big part of Seth's. So I definitely Seth did such a great job. Why not use his people? Um, and then a couple other writers in the show that just have good brains for this kind of thing. So, and I had you know, it's I was nervous they wouldn't say yes, but Lauren asks some people, and that makes it. They're more likely to say yes to Lauren. <laughs> they have to then. Um, Seth, give you any advice? Just a little bit. Um, mainly just about you know having a lot of jokes and self-editing. But I got a really. He sent me a sweet text today, just saying he was very proud and excited for me. And he'll sweet. be watching. He better. I assume he will. <laughs> yeah. Um, so why did you say yes, and and how did you get the call? Well, I got the call through my dad. Um, who left me a voicemail saying he'd gotten an email from his friend Christy, who was inviting me, and it's like that, inviting me to the, to the dinner somehow, and I, whatever it was, it was confusing, and I thought he meant he was going to go, and then she said he was gonna speak, so I assumed he was gonna do a panel or something on PR, <laughs> um, but it, and then he said, so are you gonna go? Are you gonna do it? And I was like, what is this? So finally I called him, he sent me that email, and it took us every, at the office like three days to even find out that it was real. And then once I heard it was real, I was hoping it was on a work week so that I could easily say no, but be like, I'm so grateful, so humbled, thank you so much, but I can't. Are you nervous? I'm very nervous, yeah. Why is that? I think it's just, you know, I've only heard from everyone uh, that's gone before or has thought about going before that it's just a really tough room and it's hard to really like win in that room. And so a lot of comedians, that's not an ideal situation for you. But I thought it's such a everything. It's such an amazing opportunity that that is greater to me. That uh, overshadows the, the bad. Have you thought about you have an audience in the room and then you have the audience at home watching? Yeah. And how do you thread that needle? I mean, I'll find out, I guess, <laughs> tomorrow. But I mean, we sort of do that on our show. We do have a live audience. And I come from live theater. So I'm used to that. It's more just, I think it'll be, they'll have the camera on me, I hope. So I can't mess that part up, I hope. Did your dad give you any advice? He's a former Associated Press Bureau chief. No, he's given me, he tried his second joke today and both I've been like, no, not, <laughs> you know that. I'm always threatening like, yeah, you want me to say that? You wanna hear how many laughs that gets, dad? So I'm not going to. Any jokes that you wanna share with us? That are my dad's? No, no. Well, you could, oh. or tomorrow night's. Oh, no, I can't. No way. No? You're very nice, but no, no. I got to keep them all. <laughs> Save them. 
Yeah. And anything off limits? Any one off limits? No, there, no, there's no limits really. It's just I, in my head, even if something is a little bit biting or cut, I would rather everything is funny. That's the most important. And I'm just, I think like meaner jokes, or they're just not as, fu I think you can hear it in a crowd when a joke's not working because it's mean. But you know, sometimes you can sneak little jabs in there, but they're funny, so it's okay. And topics, I mean, you've got Hillary Clinton that just announced, so many. Yes. you've got all these 2016 we Republican contenders. We may mention Hillary, we may mention the Republican contenders, I don't know. <laughs> what topics are you? Well, we've got, there's, because there is this big election coming, so that's huge. I think that there's, and there's so many people that you can poke fun at uh, in that. And then, you know, general news, topical things, but the, I think the contenders will be a pretty big chunk. You're following the president. How does that factor into It's a nightmare. What you say? He's so funny. Uh, and he gets to go first, and he can, so he will tell a bunch of jokes that I may be planning on telling that then I have to feverishly scratch out so I don't do the same joke. Will you channel any of your SNL characters? Well, I think we have a couple that are, I use voices or something, but not really. It's really just me, sort of a heightened version of myself here. What's your background? Tell our audience a little bit about my ethnic who you background. Are. No. Um, <laughs> I come from Chicago. I grew up doing a lot of theater. Um, I think I did my first play when I was eight, and then I did a lot of Chicago theater. I went and got my BFA in theater from CalArts, and then right after that, I went. I took a class at the Groundlings and really loved it, and decided I wanted to go that route. So I moved back to Chicago to study at Second City in I.O. And I was performing and touring with Second City and performing at I.O. and then did a showcase at I.O. for SNL. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the summer, I was in New York. What was your dad's influence, your mom influence on oh, I think my whole route? family is, you know, my mom was always very, very supportive, especially, you know, in theater. And my dad was like interested, but I think Getting SNL really was exciting for him, and I think this is like, there couldn't be anything better for my dad. This is so his world, he's so excited. Will he be there? Yeah, he'll be there. Good, well, Cecily Strong, thank you. Thank and you. Good luck and, I, and I'll have take fun. It. I will, afterwards <laughs> I definitely will, I promise that. Hopefully yeah. I'll have fun during. Yeah.